How Africa's top 10 richest people made their wealth, find out on this countdown. At number 10 is Isat Rebrab from Algeria. Net worth, $3.1 billion. After graduating from a professional school, Rebrab taught accounting and commercial law. He soon left teaching, and started his own accounting firm. His industrial career started in 1971, when one of his clients proposed he take shares in a metallurgical construction company, he took 20% of the shares in SOTCOM. After that, he created other companies in the steel industry. He later branched into agriculture, and media. Coming at number 9 is Isabel dos Santos from Angola. Net worth, $3.4 billion. The eldest daughter of Angola's President Jose Eduardo dos Santos is considered Africa's richest woman by Forbes. She studied electrical engineering at King's College in London. In the early 1990s, she returned from London to join her father in Luanda, and she started working as a project manager for Gemma's group that won the contract for cleaning and disinfection of the city. Following that, she set up a trucking business. The widespread use of walkie-talkie technology paved the way for her subsequent foray into telecoms. In 1997, at the age of 24, she started her first business by opening the Miami Beach Club, one of the first nightclubs and beach restaurants on the Luanda Island. Over the last 20 years she has been manager and has held management positions in companies listed on European stock exchanges. In June 2016, she was appointed by her father as chairwoman of Sonangal, the Angolan state oil company. Taking the eight spot is Nagib Soiris from Egypt. Net worth, $3.8 billion. Nagib Soiris made his wealth from telecom. He holds a diploma of mechanical engineering, and a master's in technical administration from Swiss Federal Institute of Technology, Zurich. He joined Orascom, the family business in 1979. Since then he has contributed to the growth and diversification of the company into one of Egypt's largest conglomerates and private sector employer. Soiris established and built the railway, information technology, and telecommunications sectors of Orascom. The success of these ventures as well as the other sectors of the company led to the management's decision to split Orascom into separate operating companies in the late 90s, namely, Orascom Telecom Holding, Orascom Construction Industries, Orascom Hotels and Development and Orascom Technology Systems. At number 7 is Nathan Kirsch from South Africa and Swaziland. Net worth, $3.9 billion. Kirsch grew up in a Jewish family in Potchfstroom, where he attended and matriculated from Potchfstroom Boys High in 1949. He obtained a Bachelor of Commerce at the University of Witwatersrand, and an honorary doctorate from the University of Swaziland. His main holding group, Kirsch Holdings Group, owns Swazi Plaza properties in a 50-50 partnership with the government-owned Swazi Land Industrial Development Company, SIDC. Kirsch also owns Key Corporation, a Liberian domiciled company held by the Eurona Foundation. Through Kaifin Limited, part of Key Corporation, Kirsch holds a 29.9% stake in London-based property developer Minerva. As of 2012, Kirsch had a 63% stake in Jetro Holdings, a company that owns 86 restaurant depot stores plus 10 Jetro cash and carry stores. It is believed that the company earned $6.5 billion in revenue in 2011. Since 2012, Kirsch has continued to work in real estate. According to him, real estate is the only sector where stupid people can make money. At number 6 is Christopher Wees from South Africa. Net worth, $5.9 billion. Christopher Wees is a South African businessman whose source of wealth is consumer retail. Wees studied at Pal Boys High School in the Western Cape region of South Africa. Wees attended University of Stellenbosch from where he received BA and LLB degrees. After university, Wees practiced law at the Cape Bar for some years before working as a director at Pepka, the discount clothing chain that his parents helped to found. 
Under his leadership, ShopRite started out as a chain of eight supermarkets in Cape Town that was purchased for 1 million rand, equivalent to 122,000 US dollars, which grew into a multi-billion dollar business due to various acquisitions and expansion strategies made in the first 30 years of operations. He also purchased the struggling OK Bazaars from South African breweries in 1997, inserting 157 supermarkets and 146 furniture stores to the company and adding jobs to the area. In addition to Shoprite, Wees owns more than 1,200 corporate outlets under various names. At number 5 is Nassif Soiris of Egypt. Net worth, $6.2 billion. Soiris is an Egyptian billionaire businessman, and the younger brother of Nagib Soiris who occupies the 8th spot on this list. He received his secondary education in the German International School of Cairo in Egypt. He continued at University of Chicago where he received a bachelor's degree in economics in 1982. Soiris oversaw the construction activities of Orascom since 1990. He is the CEO of Orascom Construction Industries since the company's incorporation in 1998. Coming at number 4 is Johan Rupert of South Africa. Net worth, $6.3 billion. Johan Peter Rupert is the chairman of the Swiss-based luxury goods company Rickemont as well as of the South Africa-based company Rimgro. Rupert grew up in Stellenbosch, where he attended Paul Roos Gymnasium and the University of Stellenbosch, studying economics and company law. He dropped out of the university to pursue a career in business. However, in 2004, the university awarded him an honorary doctorate in economics. Rupert served his business apprenticeship in New York City, where he worked for Chase Manhattan for two years and for Lazard Free Years for three years. He then returned to South Africa in 1979 and founded Rand Merchant Bank of which he was CEO. At number 3 is Nigeria's Mike Kadenuga. Net worth, $6.7 billion. His company Globacom is Nigeria's second largest telecom operator, and also has a presence in Ghana and Benin. He also owns stakes in the Equatorial Trust Bank and the oil exploration firm Canoil. Adenuga worked as a taxi driver to help fund his university education. He graduated from Northwestern Oklahoma State University and Pace University, New York with degrees in business administration. In 1990, he received a drilling license and in 1991, his consolidated oil struck oil in the shallow waters of southwestern Ondo State, the first indigenous oil company to do so in commercial quantity. He was issued a GSM license in 2003 after his first one issued in 1999 was revoked. Today his telecom company Globacom is spreading across West Africa. At number 2 is South Africa's Nicky Oppenheimer with a net worth of $7 billion. Oppenheimer is a South African businessman and philanthropist of German Jewish descent. He was formerly the chairman of De Beers Diamond Mining Company and of its subsidiary, the Diamond Trading Company, and former deputy chairman of the Anglo-American Corporation. He was educated at Harrow School and Christ Church, Oxford, where he read philosophy, politics and economics and took the Oxford MA. Nicky comes from a family generation that has been in the mining industry. He joined the Anglo-American Corporation in 1968, and was appointed a director in 1974. He became deputy chairman in 1983. He subsequently resigned as deputy chairman in 2001 but remained a non-executive director of the Anglo-American board until 2011. At number 1 is Aliko Dangote of Nigeria with a net worth of $12.2 billion. This Nigerian billionaire, who owns the Dangote Group, hails from a very prominent business family in Nigeria. He is the great grandson of Al Haji Al Hassan Dantata, the richest African at the time of his death in 1955. The Dangote Group was established as a small trading firm in 1977, the same year Dangote relocated to Lagos to expand the company. Today, 
It is a multi-billion conglomerate with many of its operations in Nigeria, Benin, Ethiopia, Senegal, Cameroon, Ghana, South Africa, Togo, Tanzania, and Zambia. Dangote has expanded to cover food processing, cement manufacturing, and freight. The Dangote Group also dominates the sugar market in Nigeria and is a major supplier to the country's soft drink companies, breweries, and confectioners. It also has major investments in real estate, banking, textiles and oil and gas. Thanks for watching please subscribe and share before leaving.